idle and we did nothing. No. We then drove the merchants and the sellers of beasts for sacrifices from the courtyard of the temple and we did not intervene. Yeah. How many times have we protested at the disgrace of money changers being allowed in the precincts of the temple? But then we allowed him to preach in the holy temple itself. Yeah. And no time, at no time did he recognize your authority, Caius. No made submission to the elders of Israel. No, 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 no. Denounce him in the name of the people of Israel. Denounce him. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we have that right. Can we honestly say that we represent the true thoughts and aspirations of the people of Israel? What are you saying? I've often wondered if, as elders, we're not too cut off from them and from their real problems. How can we guide them if we don't know what's in their hearts? But without our guidance, they would be lost. The people, people will run after any new thing. Why, well, they've taken up with this man Jesus with his tricks and exaggerated promises. I have seen him. I've heard him preach. His words reach into men's hearts, not like ours. It's not the old ritual, the old formulas but a new vision which seems to answer all their hopes. A message of comfort, of goodness, of purity, of the virtues of humility. We've heard it all before, from John the Baptist and hundreds of others. And why not? Hmm? That is the richness of our religion, that it's always being kept alive by new ideas. Oh, that kind of thinking encourages false prophets. What an incredible people we are. Thirsty for knowledge, but hypocrites afraid of change. We say that we want new ideas so our religion will speak to each generation. And yet, when a prophet appears, burning with faith and fiery revelations, we stifle him. Shall we go down to history as a people who destroys its prophets? Yes. No, no, please, no, brothers, please. Look, this is scarcely the time for philosophical uh, discussions. There are more urgent problems to be considered. He allows those who follow him to hail him as the Messiah. He's a blasphemer! He's an imposter! With respect to those more learned than I, there is one possibility that uh, it seems no one here is ready to consider. What is it? The possibility that Jesus of Nazareth may be, in fact, the Messiah awaited by our people. A carpenter from Galilee. This man has studied the prophecies and carefully and subtly, he never misses a chance to identify himself with them. Exactly. I only know uh, that like our brother Joseph, I've heard him preach. I was moved, lifted out of myself, and seemed to see all things in a new and blinding light. I was aware of wonders, signs that God may be with him, and through him, with us. Do you realize what you are saying, Master Nicodemus? Let him speak. Listen to him. Let him speak. Don't shout him down. The coming of the Messiah is the heart of our faith. Why should he not come now? Why do we dream our liberator will be revealed in glory, a new Solomon, new David? Is God not allowed to choose whom he wishes? Even the son of a poor carpenter from Nazareth? But David began life as a shepherd. Who are we to decide the way in which God should choose to help his people? We? Grains of sand, chaff blown in the wind. May the Lord open our eyes to his wisdom. Master Nicodemus, I have always respected you. How am I to understand your defense of this man whose mission seems to be to divide our people? Even this noble assembly has been torn asunder by him. This Jesus of Nazareth must be an extraordinary man. But is there not one among you who understands the the real significance of this matter? It is not the Galileans' words that are important, or the so-called miracles. Even the fact that frenzied crowds hail him as the Messiah, it's, it's not important. The central core 
of this case is that this man dares to proclaim and I can hardly make it say. this man dares to proclaim himself the, the son of God Master Nicodemus, in your uh, great faith and wisdom, and you, Joseph, most honest of men, can you tell us that in your heart of hearts you believe he is the Son of God, that he is equal to God? If he is not the son of God, then who is this Jesus of Nazareth? Is he a prophet? Only a false prophet can assume the powers of God and say to a persistent sinner, you are forgiven. Only God can forgive sins. All through our history, false prophets have been the plague of Israel. Yes. This man, while claiming to uphold the law, perverts our most fundamental beliefs. The Romans will not wait for us to find the answer. Our law says the prophet who claims to say in the name of God things which God has not commanded, that prophet must die. But if this man Jesus is a false prophet and a blasphemer, is it not better for one man to die than for a whole nation to perish? However, under Roman occupation, Caiaphas, the people of Israel may put a goat to death, but not a man. Thank you, Zira, for reminding us of our realities. Then he must be charged and found guilty by the Romans. But Caiaphas, we have not found him guilty yet. Surely our law does not condemn a man before first giving him a hearing before the elders of Israel? No matter how serious his offense, we cannot simply hand over one of our brothers to the Romans. Caiaphas, after the Passover, let me persuade Jesus to come to us and explain to us what is in his heart and his mind when he says he is the Son of God. Brethren, I agree. We will question him fully and give this Jesus of Nazareth every opportunity to, to defend himself. No! To delay would be too dangerous. We all know what steps Pilate would take against our people if the unrest continues. Zera, he must be taken tonight. It could cause even more trouble among the crowds if our temple guards go searching for him. It could be a long search. All over the city. No one knows where he and his followers are hiding. They stay no longer than one night in the same place. I think I know the way to reach him. Zira, don't forget. Jesus of Nazareth is one of our brothers. I've not been able to find you. You weren't seen with the master for the last day or two. Where have you been? I've been trying to think. Trying to decide what to do. You 
seemed to me to be very sure of what to do. Oh, I was. But I'm not now. Confused. I always believed action, oh, political action, could solve everything. I thought it was enough to think clearly and act clearly, but... But I fear my master does not agree with me. He doesn't need my ideas. He says the heart is more important. Perhaps he's right. Have I hardened my heart? Am I fit to be one of his disciples? <laughs> I... <sighs> I should go home. Judas, don't lie to yourself. The truth is that in your heart, you no longer believe that Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah. There's only one way to know the truth. You knew that the very first time that you came to see me. Let Jesus prove himself before the Sanhedrin. It's too late. He won't accept it. Why? There are many influential members of the council who admire Jesus. He will be fairly judged. If he is the Messiah, God will not abandon him. If he is not, then you will have helped to save Israel from yet another false prophet. Passover with you. I have longed with all my heart to share it with you. It was for this Passover that I came into the world. I shall not be with you much longer. You will look for me, but where I am going, you cannot come. Master, I will follow you wherever you go. I will lay down my life for you. Peter, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will have denied three times that you even know me. Oh, my Lord, never. <laughs> no.
Never. I will never deny you. You will all lose faith. The shepherd shall be struck and the sheep will be scattered. Even if all lose faith, I will not. I... Peter. I have prayed for you. And once you have recovered, you, in your turn, must give strength to your brothers. Truly, I tell you, one of you is about to betray me. his bread in the dish when I dip mine. He shall be the one. Blessed be thou, Lord our God, who has blessed us with thy laws and made bread issue from the earth. From now on, this will no longer be the bread of the passage of our fathers from bondage to freedom. This Passover for you today. The passage from the bondage of death to the freedom of life. This is the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread shall have eternal life.
this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. sacrament of the covenant God made with our fathers on Mount Sinai. This is my blood. The blood of the new covenant which is to be poured out for many. I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine. until the day I drink it with you. In my father's kingdom. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. And if you love one another, all men shall know that you are my disciples. Son, that thy son may glorify thee. Keep in thy name those thou hast given. I do not pray for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word. life. 